Bible reading Christians had the completed Bible by 70 AD, a whole 500 years before Muhammad was born. It is this Bible that has been recently proved unchanged for over 2,200 years, by the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Dating back to 200 BC, and when compared to the King James Version, was found to have a 99.994% accuracy rate. Muslims confuse Christians for worshipping three gods, when the Bible clearly states God is one God, but in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Luke 3 21 through 23. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass, that Jesus also being baptized, and praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape, like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee, I am well pleased. God speaking. Muslims ask, how could Allah, being one, have a son? Misunderstanding the Trinity, they sometimes charge Christians with worshipping three gods. However, Christians believe that only one true God exists. Jesus himself upheld monotheism. When asked for the greatest command, Jesus responded, The Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Mark 12, verses 29 and 30. Jesus taught that God is one, and Jesus taught that he was one with God. John 10, verse 30. In response, the Jews picked up stones to stone Jesus because they thought he was guilty of blasphemy. In the same way, Muslims would say a man claiming to be God would be guilty of shirk. However, Jesus is not a mere man claiming to be God. He is the Son of God in human flesh. John 10, verses 36 through 38. The title Son of God does not mean that Jesus was literally born from God. The Bible does not teach a physical relationship between God and Mary, as Muslims sometimes charge. At the birth of Jesus, the angel told the Virgin Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. Of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Luke 1, verses 30-35. Pastor John MacArthur explains these verses. Since a son bears his father's qualities, calling a person someone else's son was a way of signifying equality. Here the angel was telling Mary that her son would be equal to the Most High God. Man's Testimony That Jesus Is God's Son When people witness Jesus' miracles, teaching, death, resurrection, and ascension to heaven, many believe Jesus is the Son of God. Followers of Jesus testified after he calmed a storm, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Matthew 14, verses 32 and 33. Peter testified, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father who is in heaven, Matthew 16, verses 13 through 17. A woman whose brother Jesus raised to life testified, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. John 11, verses 25 through 27. Even the demons know Jesus is the Son of God. Whenever the evil spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. Mark 3, verse 11. A military officer and soldiers who were guarding Jesus at his death on the cross testified, When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. Matthew 27, verse 54. 
Thomas testified after Jesus rose from the dead. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later the disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your own hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John 20, verses 24 through 31. Jesus' own testimony that he is God's Son. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill Jesus, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own Father, making himself equal with God. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son, and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. John 5, verses 18-24 through 24. At Jesus' trial he testified. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Mark 14, verses 61 and 62. We know also that the Son of God has come, and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, even in His Son Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. 1 John 5, verse 20. God's testimony that Jesus is His Son. God spoke at Jesus' baptism. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3, verse 17. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud, saying, This is my Son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. Luke 9, verses 34 and 35. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, verses 9-13 Previously God had spoken to man through his prophets, but then he sent his own Son. In the past God spoke to our forefathers by the prophets, at many times, and in various ways. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory, and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Jesus is the exact representation of God. Although one with his Father in essence, Jesus is also distinct in person as God's Son. God has revealed himself as one God manifest in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Even before the world began, Jesus was always with God and was God. John 1 verses 1 and 2. God created all things in the universe through Jesus. Colossians 1, verses 15 through 20. Although eternally one with God, Jesus came to earth in the form of a man. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Born to the Virgin Mary, 
Jesus is fully God and fully man at the same time. Matthew 1, verses 22 and 23. Believe in the Son of God. We must believe God's word, that Jesus is God's Son, even though it's hard to understand. We will die with many hard questions unanswered, but we dare not die without responding to God's promise of judgment and salvation through His Son. John 3, verses 35 and 36. As the perfect Son of God, Jesus didn't deserve the punishment for sin, death. But by dying on the cross and rising from the dead, Jesus paid the penalty of sin and broke the power of sin for those who would be in Him. Romans 8, verses 1 through 3. God is calling sinners to turn from their own way to follow the living Lord Jesus in repentance and faith. Luke 24, verses 46 and 47. We cannot save ourselves. Only those who turn from sin and trust in the Son of God are saved from sin and eternal death. God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God.